is a massive day at Sha Tin on Sunday. Welcome to Racing to Win. This is Hong Kong's twice weekly preview show. And have we got a show for you today? Massive jackpot. A finish of the four-year-old series with the Hong Kong Derby sponsored by BMW. And to preview it all, it's Paul Lally and Tom Wood. And Tom, for the four-year-olds, it's nothing bigger than this. No, it's not, uh, Mark. And it's the race that all the owners and trainers all want to win here in Hong Kong is the BMW Hong Kong Derby. Yes, the international races in December have the international spotlight on Hong Kong. But this is the race here in Hong Kong, the BMW Hong Kong Derby. And history does show you need a triple-figure rating. And there's two horses that have that, California Spangle and also Romantic Warrior who are one piece uh, each uh, through uh, the first two legs. And we will have an in-depth look at the derby for you very soon. Firstly, though, Paul Lally, if the derby's not enough to get you excited, this jackpot certainly will. Yeah, 19.7 million going into the triple trio. So it should get up to about 32 million. Not that we need it, because the horses will do the talking on the race course anyway, but a really good jackpot there as well. It is indeed. So that's what's uh, coming up as far as the race meeting itself. This is what uh, the details for it are. It's a 10 race program, so normal start time of 1 o'clock. We're on the A course, the rails back into the true position. Meeting number 55 and all 10 races on the turf. The two races that we are going to focus on, races 8 and 10. The BMW Hong Kong Derby and the Rapper Dragon Handicap. The last being A class 2. Here's the field for the Derby. 4.40 local time is start time for it. We've got the classic mile winner in Romantic Warrior and the classic cup winner in California Spengel above him at the top of the book. Chiron Red Star, he went up to the 1,600 metres in the UK. I'm a single man has the blinkers off. Senor Toba will wear blinkers for the first time. Far, far. At this stage, all of his form is still over at Happy Valley. Rocket Spade has had the blinkers added as well. Champion Dragon won a Class 3 over the 1800 last time. Mr Ascendancy wears the blinkers for the first time. And Nordic Sky is actually a Derby winner. He won the Derby Paulista in Brazil over 2400 metres prior to arriving. Well, we know, Tom, that California Spengel, he likes to lead in his races. He got a beautiful lead in the Classic Cup and they couldn't run him down. But with Rocket Spade's trial, he might get some more pressure in this race on Sunday. Yeah, well, Tony Cruz holds uh, the key to this race, uh, really, with three runners in it. California Spangle, champion dragon, a last start uh, winner. Uh, I'm a single man who also can race handy, and sometimes he can get a bit uh, fierce in the run, Paul, but I think the signs were there with the trial from Rocket Spade. Blinkers going on, and they uh, sent him out uh, to a big lead in that barrier trial. Yeah, he, they, really, they really put the pressure on him in that trial. He's a 2,400 metre winner, so he'll want the race run at a true pace as well, as will the other stable runner, Senor Toba. So both those horses will want a bit of pace on. So, look, um, the, I think the intent was there that uh, they're going to go forward with the rocket spade after that trial. All right, so before we get into this year's race, let's go back and have a look at uh, some past winners. And, of course, it was Golden 62 years ago, Tom Sky Darcy with that great ride from Joe last year. And... Very sad that we've lost him since then. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Furore, a, a winner uh, prior to with that as well for uh, Frankie Law and uh, Hugh Bowman and then a Ping High Star and uh, that great win from Rapid Dragon going back uh, five years or so uh, now back in 2017. But uh, it always produces uh, a good uh, runner going forward as the derby. Yeah. Here it is, Paul. Triple figure ratings back to 2010. They've all been triple figures does that have to be the case this year? Well, look, it's a, there's only two horses in triple figures, as Tom said, which is um, the California Spangle and Romantic Warrior. Look, if you look, go back through the years, though, you see horses like Super Saturn back there. He was the sixth-rated highest uh, in, in the race. Ping High Star was the third-rated highest in the race. Uh, and last year, you had horses like Russian Emperor and Panfield, who both you know, arguably could have won the derby and they, neither of them were rated over 100 either. So I don't, I think it'd be folly just to say it's a two horse race. All right, well, the man that rode last year's winner, Sky Darcy, for Casper Founds, will team up with Casper again this year on the Grey Senor Toba via Zoom. This is what Joe Marira told Nick of his chances in the BMW Hong Kong derby of 2022. Joe, a big day coming up in the calendar here in Hong Kong, a day that you know very well. It's the BMW Hong Kong Derby, and your mount this year is Senor Toba. How pleased have you been with this horse leading up to the big race? Well, lately I've been very pleased with him. He's a kind of a horse that from the day one I sat on him for the first time, uh, he gave me a good feel. He gave me a feel that he would appreciate the distance better than anyone else. Um, he has had that interruption during some of um, some of period of time of last last month, but he was able to bounce back, put on a good run, 
had a great preparation since then. We had, we had him trawling a couple of times. We jumped him out the other day uh, from the gates on the grass. And he's just giving me the feeling that he, each day he's improving a little bit. So I'm very pleased with him. Joe, talk me through that recent trial because um, there was a good tempo on with the stablemate Rocket Spade, who also runs in the derby. But as you say, he had the blinkers on. Uh, was that trial everything that you and Casper wanted him to, to achieve? We've noticed that he has improved. He wouldn't be able to perform in that way a month before. I mean, talking about the trial, he wouldn't trial as well as he did a month before. Uh, we've done a few changes on him. Obviously, it's Casper's idea trying to improve the horse as he always does, which is fantastic. Uh, he add blinkers on, and we notice that he's a little bit more focused. But you, you said yourself that Barry trial was such a hot tempo kind of a trial. We were not able to master with them because he, he's a real stayer. You know, um, we we. We had him going as well as we could, and I was very happy the way how he's done that trial. He did not win, but he ran home well enough to get me satisfied with it. Yeah, you know, there's not much prize money in trials, so you perhaps don't want to win them. You want to save it for the race. Um, just from his barrier as well, um, he's jumping from the most successful barrier since uh, the year 2000. Gate number three has won it four times. So um, a really nice position to be going into that first turn. Just talk us through the, the nature of the, 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 the track, Joe. I mean, 2,000 metres, that... That first bend comes up really quickly. Yeah, we, listen, if you, if you get outside gate, it's always going to be very difficult. Even you press on forward to try to come across in front of most of the horses and slotting, or you're very likely to drop back and put back uh, at the back of the tail. And you pretty much relying on luck, how fast they're going, if you're going to get a horse that will take into the race, you know, if you're going to find the right horse to bring you into the race, but I'm putting that way. But from great, gate, gate three, he, you actually have the benefit of being where you want to be. You can press on a little bit more and be a bit closer, or if you just want to let your horse find his own rhythm, you will still find yourself in front of a majority of the horses that actually are jumping from the outside gates. I know a few horses on this race from the outside gate will press on and try to lead the race, put on a bit of pace. Um, I honestly think it's going to be a slow run race, but I'm, I got the feeling somebody is going to make the move halfway through and then inject pace onto the race. Those horses that were able to actually find themselves very comfortable and get themselves into their comfort zone the first half should be the strongest at the line. Uh, Senor Toba is a kind of a horse that does not have a lot of gate speed, so I, I guess even if we are very lucky to bounce him out of the gate as well as possible, he's likely to be midfield. Um, and as I said, I guess we are going to start building up from the second half of the race. Uh, he is a horse that is speaking. We are yet to see the best of him. He's far off of his very peak. But, you know, it's, he's only running against the same age of horses, which is a benefit. He has won against much more mature horses before, horses that actually end up in expressing form. And I could not see this horse perform badly against the same age of horses that he's going to be running against on the weekend. There he is, a confident sounding Joe Marira after Senor Toba's run in the Classic Cup and also that trial. We're going to go back to the Classic Cup now. And we'll just have a look at the horses jump out of the gates first of all, because it was a completely different start point to the 2,000 metres. And highlighting a few here, Tom, we've got California Spangle. He'll end up making the lead. Romantic Warrior perhaps actually jumped too well. The Irishman, who Paul has been keen on right throughout the four-year-old series. Money Catcher has improved in a short time in Hong Kong. And Rocket Spade, who we saw in that trial with the blinkers on with Turin Red Sun. Another one that has been a fine when it comes to the four-year-old series. But... We heard Nick say in that interview with Joe, short run of the first turn in the derby and California Spengler will have to try and use all of his natural early speed from 10. He certainly will. Now, what I wanted to point out here is I think Karis Teton certainly had an opportunity to uh, get forward to here on uh, Romantic Warrior because he jumped so well. I think the sectionals can uh, back that up. We'll see a graphic on that shortly. He's been caught wide here. Intrepid winners kicked up. I'm a single man's a bit keen. Uh, down on the inside uh, there, the, the horse and the, the blue and gold. But with the early sections, Sir Paul, they, they weren't running slow, but there was definitely an opportunity for Karis Teton to get up outside uh, potentially California Spangle, I thought. 
Yeah, and he look. He, and in, in the end, he got caught wide, didn't he? And had a real gut buster of a run. Unfortunately, it was still a top run from the horse. It's just how much has been taken out of him. He was three or four wide the whole way uh, from the run. So from barrier number uh, eight, uh, we'll see what happens. If he jumps well and does go forward, he he will try and slot in. I think. What about the horses? So many of them going to the 2,000 metres for the first time. Not all of them. We'll start with you, Paul. California Spangle. It's been talked about. Is he suspect at the trip? Well, he is if he's taken on. There's no question about it. If Rocket Spade or another horse like Money Catcher wants to take him on, then, you know, any horse in front... I mean, it's very, very hard. I think it hasn't been done for 30-odd years in the derby. A horse has led all the way. So, look, he's a very, very good horse, California Spangle. And, look, he could be the best horse, probably going to be the best horse going forward. The, the question is the 2,000, without doubt. Of the others that finished behind him there, Tom, who are you picking out of that Classic Cup? Yeah, look, look, I thought Money Catcher was very good. He keeps on improving with each and every run. Uh, Turin Red Sun was uh, closing well. And you can see those uh, sectional times through the run. 13.78, 21.94 compared to Romantic Warriors, 21.98. He wouldn't have had to use too much more petrol, I feel, to go forward. And then 23.94. Zach has backed them a little bit uh, up down the side uh, in that uh, fourth uh, section. So, yeah, I, I definitely think there was a case that he could have gone forward with Romantic Warrior last start. Are you taking those sectionals leading into the derby, Paul? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a different race because from the 2,000 metres, that's the that's the key. It's it's, it's The 2,000 metre starts a lot different from the 1,800 metre start because you've got that first bend coming up. We've got three coming out of this race. This was over the 1,800 metres. Champion Dragon, flashy look. You won't miss him in the run. Crossford, who was a winner on uh, two or three starts ago, and SJ Torbin, he's been pretty disappointing since he's been there. Of these three, Paul, do you give any of them even a, a rough show of winning the derby? No, probably not. I think this was a lot, lot um, sort of a weaker form race than the other one. Champion Dragon, I think, is going to end up in the right position. So of the three, probably. Yeah. This was sort of the, the last chance saloon race for, for a few of these two. We get into the derby and Champion Dragon's been able to, to do it on ratings. He'd have to certainly find a bit. Uh, I haven't seen enough from SJ Torby. And he was there in that uh, shout with sort of 100 metres to go, but just uh, peaked on his run there. So those three don't do a, a great deal for me. We've seen this trial in the interview with Joe, Tom. So we'll talk about the two that uh, aren't Senor Toba. This is Rocket Spade. Now... It was only over the 1,200 metres and he absolutely sped along with the blinkers on. Money Catcher had the job of taking the field up to him and he's been in your selections, certainly in the Classic Cup Money Catcher, but he's been somewhat flying under the radar since he's been here. Yeah, he has, and I don't think there's any query sort of with the, the distance for him. Uh, he did place up to 2,100 metres in New Zealand, uh, so I don't think 2,000 metres is going to, to find him out. There was no real pressure put on him in the, the barrier trial. Uh, Rocket Spade, I've been a fan of him as well, but he just hasn't quite come up to the extent I thought he might, uh, Paul, uh, uh, this uh, time round for Rocket Spade. Yeah, he's a Group 1 winner over 2,400 metres. He won the derby, of course, in New Zealand, Rocket Spade. He did race in the blinkers over there. They put the blinkers on for this trial and he's going to be wearing them on race day. So look, Casper will have him cherry right for this race. And of those horses that did come out of that, he, he did have the best form rocket spade. So if he can reproduce any of that, then look, he, I, I think he can run on a bit of a race. They do come with very similar form lines, Money Catcher and Rocket Spade from New Zealand. Pressure time now, Paul. Who wins the derby? I'm going to stick with the Irishman. I've been with him the whole way. I just think the 2,000 metres is going to be perfect. If they do um, go quick in front, he's going to be at the back. He'll, he'll make the use of that. Romantic Warrior, as long as that run hasn't taken anything out of him, uh, he's, in, you know, he's got the right credentials to win the race. California Spangle, he's, he's a class horse. So you can't rule him out totally. And Turin Red Sun is the big improver throughout the four-year-old series. 3-2-1-4. 2 8, 1 and uh, 3. I'll settle with the uh, romantic uh, warrior here. I just think uh, the trip is just going to uh, suit him down to the, the ground here. Drawn at the gate 8 for Rikaris Teton and Danny Shub. He's only just had that one uh, miss and that was last start when fourth and certainly wasn't disgraced there. 8 money catcher goes in, 1 California Spangle and 3 the Irishman. So 2 8, 1 and 3. There it is, the Derby preview here on Racing to Win. We're heading to a break right now. Back to have a look at race number 10 right after this. Welcome back. You're watching Racing to Win, Hong Kong's twice weekly preview show, and it's Derby Day at Sha Tin on Sunday. We've seen the Derby on to race number 10, a class two over the 1,200 metres. Winning Dreamer, bad draw, barrier 13, the tongue tie comes off. We've got Blaze Warrior, plus four pounds on his second to Cordycep six. Down to Hong Kong win, all his wins have been at 1,000. Keep you warm, has placed four from eight course and distance. Good luck, friend, is on a seven day backup. Winner Method. 
He's on a turnaround to 11 days, however, from Happy Valley. An astrologer comes across from Happy Valley to Sha Tin for the first time and has the shadow role added. So that's uh, the starters list for the last. Now the speed map for this, Tom, and it's a quality field and there's plenty of pace in it. Yeah, there is quite a lot of pace, in fact, in this uh, contest. Uh, Harmony and Bless likes to go with Ford, but uh, he was well beaten uh, last start. He has uh, stripped fitter, though, 32 pounds. Uh, Lucky with you should be handy. Then there's a line-up, Paul, a Stolt, winner method, classic unicorn. He likes to lead, but he's been disappointing. And where's old poor old winning dreamer going to end up? Well, he's just about in the river, isn't he? <laughs> there's, uh, the way he, he likes to go forward with all that speed underneath him, I don't know where he's going to slot in unless they completely change the tactics and go back. Uh, California Red likes to kick up. Highly proactive is another one that's led in the past. Uh, so, uh, and Hong Kong win from the inside draw. So it's going to be a uh, yeah, fastly run race, I think. That is indeed. Great race to finish the day. Lucky with you. Had his previous start in the Classic Mile. He comes back to this Class 2 race. Nick caught up with David Hayes with a special guest appearance from Prue in the background. David, lucky with you is a horse that you'll, uh, you'll bring back to Charlton this Sunday. You've given him a bit of a freshen up since the Classic Mile. Yeah, he, he sort of didn't run the mile at the elite level very well. But I, I do think he can, if you just keep him as a sprinter, 1,400-metre horse, has the capability to rate probably over 100. Uh, were you, how pleased were you with that recent trial at Chung Fa, David? Because visually it looked very good. Yeah, he always trials very well. He's a, he's a willing track worker and, and trials like a probably upper-class horse. So I, I think he'll freshen up or has freshened up very well, and we'll see on the weekend. He's got a bit of a sticky gait, but there's a, quite a bit of speed in the race, so he might be able to cruise across and sit just behind the pace and, and, and be strong late. Uh, I was gonna, it leads me on nicely, actually, to my next question, obviously, with the gait. I mean, the fact he's got so much natural speed, I suppose that's going to stand him in good stead from the outside. Yeah, look, he, he, he um, before he came to Hong Kong, he wasn't a leader at all. He used to sit off the pace and charge home. Uh, but because of the barriers he, he drew early in his preparation and the tempo of the races, he was able to cruise across and sit on speed. Um, now he's up in class. The tempo of the races can be faster. He's probably going to be a sit and sprint horse, I think. And obviously, also just under the circumstance for the Classic Mile, obviously Karras didn't ride him and, and eventually rode the, the winner, but you've got Karras back on board, so that's got to be a plus two, hasn't it? Yeah, and and, and uh, I think that's a plus. And, you know, you just have to look back when he ran second at 1,400 to that good horse that might win the derby on the weekend. So his form is very, very good at when he's at his ride to there he is, David Hayes, trainer of Lucky With You. He's opposition, Tom. You were all over Blaze Warrior as a long shot last time. 23 to 1 he went out at. There he is last turning from home. Joe gets back aboard and he's come up the early favourite this week. Yeah, so there we know value about him here, especially if Joe rides some winners during the day. And he's stripped a, a fitted horse, I think, to uh, dropping 19 pounds. was basically last on the, the home turn, but he's uh, really steamed to home, uh, uh, Paul. And so that was sort of the blaze worry of old last start. Yeah, so look, he showed he's back to some form here. And it's a good form race. Cordy Sip 6, I think, is a high-class horse that uh, won the race. So, look, he definitely goes in for me. From barrier number two, he's going to be a lot closer. Also, California Rad Stoltz and Winning Dreamer Classic Unicorn in that replay. Here is Good Luck Friend, Paul. He raced last weekend, so a quick turnaround for him. Yeah, so quick back up for Good Luck Friend. It wasn't a bad run uh, behind uh, Winning Method here. He was on the inside. He had every chance, but he, he stayed on nice enough. He drew 10 then. He's drawn 10. There's a lot of pace underneath him. Yeah, and that was 1,400 metres. They dropped him back to a 1,200. He's never won over 1,400 metres, uh, but he is a four-time winner over 1,200 metres. So I'm definitely keen to entertain him here. So that is a look at race number 10 and a few of the maybes in that. Who is the winner of the last, Paul? Got to go lucky with you. I, I just the 1,200 is the key. Back to 1,200. I think you can either sit back or, or get, go forward and sit outside his um, stable, mate. Uh, Blaze Warrior there in there for second. Astrologer coming to St Charton for the first time. I think he'll be suited here. And Navas too. Back to 1,200. Be running on late with the pace in the race. 11, 2, 14 and 12. 11, 2, 9 and 14 I've gone with uh, here. Lucky with you. I think back in trip will really assist him here. A horse number 11 over number 2 and that is uh, Blaze Warrior. There'll be no value about him this week, uh, however, but he's a, a big chance. Good luck, friend. And Astrologer coming to with Shartan for the first time. He's dropped 23 pounds and has trialled well. 11, 2, 9 and 14.
That's the preview for race number 10. Eight other races on the program, Paul, that we haven't talked about. Who are some of the winners, including a horse you've been keen on, the impressive Voyage Bubble going up in grade. Now, you see on top for you as well. Yeah, I think he'll win Voyage Bubble. I do like uh, Lucky Gore. I thought his uh, debut run here in Hong Kong was very good. Star Contacts. Uh, looking really good as his three starts as well. So those are three horses I think can win earlier on. They are selections from Paul. And you can see a breakdown of all of those races on the website hkjc.com. Click on audio and video. You can go race by race. Your best bet comes up early, Paul. Yeah, one of those I mentioned. Number four, Lucky Gore. Uh, down the straight 1,000. Just got third on uh, debut, but it was a really good run. And I think he can win this race. And massive action in race number nine. Uh, the horse really improved from start one to start two. And uh, just I, th I think he can go forward and uh, he can uh, run a really good race once again. And he's in the Q. QQP with 1, 11 and 12 QQP, Sylvester Golden Empire and uh, the other horse Massive Action. In the Derby, race 8, number 2, Romantic Warrior. I think he'll be tough to beat up to 2,000 metres for the son of Acclamation, Karis Teton and Danny Shum. The value, Charity Grace, another mount for Karis Teton. I think the step up to 1,600 metres will really suit him this time round, Charity Grace and set the play. Voyage Bubble is the banker with Here Comes Ted, ready to win, who was disappointing on a wet track last start in Pins Prince. Going with, he won't be any value running glory, but he goes to 1,600 metres for the first time. He'll get back and he'll charge home. Joe Marira for John Size. Going for race three, number two, Beauty Spirit is the long shot. Last win, of course, in distance win, came off a rating of 56. Alexi Bedell rode that day for Tony Cruz. So he teams up again off the same mark in the play. Back to race six, running glory, zoom, boom, and let's do it who, step, let's do it who steps up in uh, distance for the first time to the 1,600 metres as well. So that's been racing to win, Tom. We're back to Happy Valley on Wednesday night, but at the moment it's all about shut in tomorrow. Yeah, it certainly is, uh, Mark. What a great day it will be. Shame again, no one will be there to witness uh, history again for the BMW Hong Kong Derby, but it's the race that they all want to win. Yeah, and it's going to be a really good race. Really looking forward to that and a high-quality support program as well. That has been Racing with To Win. Enjoy your Derby Day, the first race on Sunday at 1 o'clock. Bye-bye.